Hello everybody, my name is Rishabh Bhandari, I'm a faculty at First White and today we're going to do chapter 2 of the book The Movements. The name of the chapter is The Adventures of Toto. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time. I'm going to read out the chapter and I'm going to explain what is all happening here and what everything means if a difficult line of phrase comes to you or a difficult word comes to you. So let's go ahead. Grandfather bought Toto from a Tonga driver for the sum of 5 rupees. The Tonga driver used to keep the little red monkey tied to a feeding trough. And the monkey looked up so out of place there that grandfather decided he would add the little fellow to his private jeep. Now, uh, so the narrator is obviously the grandson or granddaughter. And he's telling the story or she's telling the story from uh, their own perspective and saying that their grandfather uh, bought a monkey from a driver, for a Tonga driver, and uh, for five rupees. Now, the thing is, why he bought it? Because he said that, you know, he's just keeping it here. The, 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 the Tonga driver is just keeping this uh, monkey here and just tied to him. And, like, he, this is not the place for him. So, let me just buy him and, like, keep it in my private room. Now, Toto was a pretty monkey. His bright eyes sparkled with mischief beneath the deep set eyebrows. And his teeth, which were pearly white, were very often displayed in a smile that frightened the life out of elderly Anglo Indian ladies. Now, they're saying the author is describing how Toto looked. And according to the author, Toto was pretty. So, the eyes were sparkly, the teeth were pearly white, but they would scare the Anglo Indian people and the elderly people. But his hands looked dried up, as though they had been pickled in the sun for many years. Yet his fingers were quick and wicked, and his tail, while adding to his good looks, also served as a third hand. So, when you look at uh, when you look at when you would look at Toto's hand, they were dried; they were totally dried. But saying, but his fingers were quick and wicked, so they like they they knew where to go, when to go, and how they were agile as well. And the tail, uh, it added to the good looks because the grandfather also believed that tail would look like good, like would add. Beauty, beauty to anybody, right? So, uh, that also served as a third hand. He could use it to hang from a branch and it was capable of scooping up any delicacy that might be out of reach of his hands. So, he would use it because as you've seen monkeys uh, tie their uh, tail or wound their tail on a branch and hang from it or they can grab something from uh, the tail as well. Grandmother always fast when grandfather bought some new bird or animal. So it was decided that Toto's presence should be kept a secret from her until she was in particularly good mood. Grandfather and I put him away in a little closet opening into my bedroom wall where he was tied securely, or so we thought, to a peg fastened into the wall. So obviously the grandmother did not like that, you know, the grandfather would that the grandfather would bring so many animals and birds to the home. So what they thought is like, you know, let's just keep this monkey a secret till the time that grandmother is in a good mood and when she is in good mood, we'll tell him. So for the time being, they kept him in a closet and they would tie him to a, like a peg that was, in, that was fastened in a wall and they thought like, this is secure or I mean, they thought. A few hours later, when grandfather and I came back to release Toto, we found the walls which had been covered with some ornamental paper chosen by grandfather now stood out as naked brick and plaster. So when they came back, they saw that there was no wallpaper. It was just brick and plaster. The peg in the wall had been wrenched from its socket and my school blazer, which had been hung there, was in shreds. Now, from the place that was tied in, it was pulled out and the school blazer that was that was hanging, the author's school blazer that was hanging, that was in shreds. The monkey had scratched everything. I wondered what grandmother would say, but grandfather didn't worry. He seemed pleased with Toto's performance. So the author was worried about like, you know, what would grandmother say? But grandmother was like, okay, he was, he was happy. He's clever, said the grandfather. Given time, I'm sure he could have tied the torn pieces of your blazer into a rope and made his escape from the window. So the grandfather uh, appreciated uh, Toto's uh, mind and intelligence and he said that, he even said that, if he had time, he would have taken the shreds from the blazer and would have tied a rope to escape from the window. 
His presence in the house still a secret. Toto was now transferred to a big cage in servants quarter where a number of grandfather's pets lived very socially together. A tortoise, a pair of rabbits, a tame squirrel and for a while my pet goat. So they thought okay we can't keep it in our home let's keep it in a servants quarter. And in the servants quarter a lot of animals lived. The tortoise, the rabbits, even the goat, the squirrel, everybody lived there. But the monkey wouldn't allow any of his companions to sleep at night. So grandfather, who had to leave Dehradun next day to collect his pension in Saharanpur, decided to take him along. Now it also shows that the family is living in Dehradun. It's, it's a it's a hill station. So what happened is the monkey didn't let anybody sleep. So uh, grandfather decided, okay, that I have to leave for Saharanpur to collect my pension. Let me just take him along with me. Unfortunately, I could not accompany grandfather on that trip, but he told me about it afterwards. A big black canvas kit bag was provided for Toto. This, with some straw at the bottom, became his new abode. So, the author would not accompany the grandfather to his trip, but they said, okay, they gave Toto a big canvas kit bag, and in the bottom of the kit bag, there were some straws where Toto would lay. So, this was his abode. His place for staying. When the bag was closed, there was no escape. Toto could not get his hands through the opening, and the canvas was too strong for him to bite his way through. His efforts to get out only had the effect of making the bag roll about on the floor or occasionally jump into the air, an exhibition that attracted the curious crowds of onlookers on the Dehradun railway station. Now, the thing is, because the bag was zipped, Toto could not get out. He could not, he could not uh, get his hands out or his face. I, because, and because the bag was made of canvas, it was strong, yeah, the Toto could not even get an egg, get out by biting the bag. So the only thing that he could do was just roll or jump in the air, which if you look up bag, doing that, people would look, right? And that became an exhibition, that became a sight for people that were there on the Dehradun mm-hmm. station. Toto remained in the bag as far as Saharan did. But while grandfather was producing his ticket at the railway turnstile, Toto suddenly pulled his head out of the bag and gave the ticket collector a white bill. So, as long as he was in Saharanpur, till the time he uh, was in Saharanpur, he stayed in the bag. But as the moment the grandfather was providing his ticket, this is my ticket, he just pulled his head out of the bag. The poor man was taken aback, but with great presence of mind and much to grandfather's annoyance, he said, Sir, you have a dog with you. You have to pay for it accordingly. No, the ticket collector was scared, but he was sharp. And what he did actually kind of pissed off uh, the grandfather. He said, sir, you have a dog with you. You have to pay for it. Because in that time, uh, if, if you had to carry a pet, if you had to carry a dog, you had to buy a ticket. In vain, did grandfather take out, take, in vain, did grandfather take Toto out of the bag. In vain did he try to prove that a monkey did not qualify as a dog or even as a quadro. Toto was classified a dog by the ticket collector and then 3 rupees was summed, handed over as his pair. So, like he grandfather tried to tell the ticket collector that this is, this is like, this is a monkey. He took him out of the bag, this is a monkey. He's not a dog. And even a quadro. A quadro is any animal who walks on four feet. So, more like mammals only. Uh, and he tried to prove it, but no, Toto was classified as a dog by the ticket collector. And three rupees, mind you, in that time, three rupees was a lot. Okay, it was like a ticket fair only. That was charged for him. The grandfather, uh, just to get his own back, took from his pocket our pet tortoise and said, what must I pay for this? Simply charge for all animals. Then, because he was so angry, the grandfather took out a tortoise from his pocket and said, Do you want me to pay for this? Like, I'll pay for this. He was so angry. The ticket collector looked closely, prodded it with its forefinger, gave grandfather a pleased and a triumphant look and said, No charge. It is not at all. So, after this, the ticket collector went down, looked for it, and just like, 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 poked it with his forefinger. And said, no, no, you don't have to pay for this. It's not at all. <laughs> it was just amazing because the ticket collector really thought about it. When Toto was finally accepted by grandmother, he was given a comfortable home in the stable. We had a companion for the family donkey, Nana. 
Or Toto's first night in the stable, grandfather paid him a visit to see if he was comfortable. To his surprise, he found Nana without apparent cause pulling at her halter and trying to keep her head as far as possible from the bundle of hay. Now, eventually they told the grandmother that this is what is the monkey that we got. And the grandmother, grandmother was okay with it as well. Uh, so finally they gave him a uh, home in the family stable where they would uh, keep him and uh, family donkey Nana became his friend. Why and how? Because on the first night where Toto was in the stable, grandmother went to see that what is he doing? Is he comfortable or not? And he saw that Nana, the family donkey, was was not there, was not in her usual position. She was just being like if she's supposed to set up the hair on the on the bundle of hay, she was very far from it. Grandfather gave Nana a slap across her punches and she jumped up, dragging Toto with her. He had fastened onto her long ears and with his sharp little teeth. Now uh, grandfather did what he could do. He just like smacked uh, Nana and Nana just you know jerked back and went to her place and when he, she was going went to her when she was going to her place grandfather noticed that little Toto had grabbed onto Nana's ears by his teeth. Now if you don't worry about it it's not like it was not hurting it was just a form of like affection. Toto and Nana never became friends because both of them didn't like each other. Because Toto thought, okay, this is a weird animal. And so did Nana. They never became uh, <laughs> they never became friends, but they were companions for them. A great treat for Toto during cold winter evenings was the large bowl of warm water given to him by grandmother for his bath. So he would cunningly test the temperature with his hand, then gradually set his bath, first one foot, then the other until he was to, uh, into the water up to his neck. So what uh, Toto liked a lot was uh, when the large bowl of warm water was given to him by grandmother for his bath. So what he would do, he would do the same thing as all of us do uh, because he had seen the author doing that. So what he would just take the temperature with his hand, then he would slightly go to one feet and then next feet and then he would try to sit down as long as he was still his neck, he would sit down there. Once comfortable, he would take the soap in his hands or feet and rub himself all over. When the water became cold, he would get out and run as quickly as he could to the kitchen fire in order to dry himself out. If anyone laughed at him during this performance, Toto's feelings would be hurt and he would refuse to go on with his bath. Now, he was so intelligent that once he was comfortable, if you gave the soap to him, he would just rub it on his own and wash himself and just as the water became cold, he would run to the kitchen fire and dry him out. Now he was so intelligent that if anybody would laugh at him during all this performance, he would get hurt and would like, okay, I'm not going to take this path anymore. That, that's how intelligent Toto was. One day, Toto nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive. A large kitchen kettle had been left on the fire to boil for tea and Toto, finding himself with nothing better to do, decided to remove the lid. Finding the water just warm enough for a bath, he got in with his head sticking out from the open kettle. This was just fine for a while until the water began to boil. Toto then raised himself a little but finding it cold outside, sat down again. He continued hopping up and down for some time until grandmother arrived, hauled him half boiled out of the kettle. Now the thing is, he actually tried, like he was almost boiled himself in the water. Why? Because there was this kettle uh, where water was boiling for tea and Toto saw it and like, oh, what should I do with it? He checked the temperature, it was fine. He's like, okay, let me just dunk myself into it. So the temperature was good for him. But slowly the temperature started boiling, water started boiling, temperature started rising. So what he would do, he would like stand up and he would say, okay, it's cold outside. And he would sit down again. And he would do that. And by sheer luck, fortunately, grandmother noticed Toto and, and found him like half boiled out of the kettle. And that's how, but he was safe. If there's a part of the brain, especially devoted to a misty, that past was largely developed in Toto. He was always tearing things to pieces. Whenever one of my aunts came near to him, 
he made every effort to get hold of her dress and tear a hole in it. Now, they, the author is saying that if there was a part of the brain which was for mischief, Toto had it developed like to the maximum part because he was always up to it. Like he, he wanted to tear things up whenever the aunts, uh, like the grandmother and grandfather's daughters, would come near him. They would make sure he would make sure that there should be a hole in their dress. One day at last time, a large piece of pillow stood in the center of the dining table. We entered the room to find Toto stuffing himself with rice. My grandmother screamed, and Toto threw a plate at her. One of my aunts rushed forward and received a glass of water in her face. When grandfather arrived, Toto picked up the dish of pillow and made his exit through a window. We found him in the branches of a jackfruit tree. The dish still in his arm. He remained there all afternoon, eating slowly through the rice, determined on finishing every grain. And then, in order to spite grandmother, who had screamed at him, he threw other dish down from the tree and chattered with delight when it broke into a hundred pieces. Now, one day, what happened is that they were going for lunch and saw that there was a big pile, or big dish of pulao that was there. And they found that Toto was eating from it. Grandmother screamed at him. And Toto, what he did, he threw a plate at her. One of the aunts tried to go and like you know stop him. She got a glass of face. Toto threw a glass of water in her face. And that was like that was that was causing chaos. So grandfather came in. So when he saw the grandfather, he took the whole dish and ran out of out of the out of the room from the window and. They found himself on a jackfruit tree, and he was so determined he was finishing one by one. Like I will finish the whole thing. Now, once he had done this, because he had to get back at the grandmother from screaming at him, he threw the plate from the tree, and even chattered and with joy and jubilant uh, way when the plate broke. So he was very human in that way. He had emotions and he had intelligence in that way. That's what the author is trying to tell us. Obviously, Toto was not the sort of pet we could keep for long. Even grandfather realized that we were not well to do, and he could not afford the frequent loss of dishes, clothes, curtains, and all that. So grandfather found the Tonga driver and sold Toto back to him for only three rupees. Now they realized that okay, this pet is intelligent. Clever, but we cannot afford him because the the loss is that we're facing because of the plates or the big breaking of the plates or the the tearing of curtains and dresses and uh, shredding of wallpapers. It's not affordable for us. So grandfather took him to the tower driver from which he had bought him and then sold it back to him for three rupees. He bought it for five rupees and sold it for three rupees, and that's. The story of the adventures of Toto. The author is the legendary Ruskin one, and there is something about his stories that you just fell in love with. So I hope you liked the story and you understood and you learned something. So that's it for today's session. 